out of the three different textures straight wavy and curly women with naturally curly hair struggle the most at length retention and scalp health how do you retain moisture with your hair in braids how do you retain moisture if you're doing protective styles how are you retaining moisture if you're going swimming and things of that nature in this video I will teach you how to use the scientific method to get to the answer by the end of this video you will know the scientific method so good that you'll be able to use it to break down any problem that you are having with your body whether it's with your hair or with your health boo okay so let's hop right into this video before we get started make sure you go ahead and subscribe here to my channel and then click on that bell notification so you notified every time I post another video now the full scientific method is broken down into a couple of steps observation slash the question research the topic area your hypothesis meaning like whatever you guessed in test with experiments analyze the data and report your conclusion that is the scientific method so let's go ahead and use the scientific method and plug it in right here why do women with naturally curly hair struggle to retain length and scalp health keep in mind my research comes from over 15 years within the hair industry as a licensed cosmetologist along with about three going on four years as an herbalist and a research scientist studying the human scalp all of my clients when they first came to me were required to fill out a client record card and within that client record card I was able to collect information on every client their porosity everything and one of the main problems that I found with every single client that all had a certain type of scalp infection like seborrheic dermatitis, dandruff, scalp psoriasis, and all of these different disorders. They were the same ones over and over and over again. Also, another question that was asked to my clients, I needed to know what their everyday patterns were. And across the board, the majority of them did wash and goals or they would wet their hair and have their hair in wet ponytails packed with gel and things of that nature. Combing their hair would actually break it. And they also believed, another thing, the majority of my clients also believed that the only way to detangle curly hair is to do so when it is wet, right? Not understanding that the hair is weakest when it is wet so it is easiest to break your hair when you are combing it and detangling your hair wet because there is a difference between combing and detangling the hair most were making homemade product heavily acidic name mainly because most people don't understand that with hair products a preservative must go in especially if you're using food because the food is alive and once you mix it is going to keep growing and things will keep happening even in your food that has preservatives things will keep growing right so preservatives were not added and things that were highly acidic like apple cider vinegar was added to formulations across the board so in return most of my clients had weakened bonds holes within the hair shaft which resulted in different hair shafts disorder a big number of them had different scalp infections and this was mainly because in this was mainly because in this was mainly because the majority of my clients did do co-washing co-washing and pre-pulling was something that took over and although in theory it sounded good the long-term effects were bad because the majority of my clients had hydro fatigue and hydro fatigue is caused when the cuticle and the cortex are forced to swell and is caused when the follicle is forced to swell and unswell over and over again and the bonds are never properly set by co-washing with something like coconut oil or a really co-washing period with any type of commonogenic oil is simply something that you shouldn't do because it's simply something it's simply something that you shouldn't do simply because 
and we'll talk a little bit more about co-washing and pre-pooing and the difference between pre-pooing and just simply detangling your hair and if you run into a knot getting a little bit of oil on that knot there's a difference i'll have a video coming really really soon but the majority of women across the board the majority of my clients in their client record card the main thing that i noticed everyone had a different scalp infection simply because most women a only wash their hair every couple of months and a believe that dirt and bacteria made their hair grow so the majority of women had an over um production of bad bacteria because you have good and bad bacteria on your scalp at all times we'll be here all day if i try to list all of the different things that i saw upon me doing my research on this topic after 15 years and over 45,000 clients my hypothesis is simply that most of the patterns that women with curly hair have been following over the last let's say about 10 to 11 years and this is for me being in the industry for 15 of those years the patterns that women have been following have led them to have scalp inflammation and weak hair shafts the hair shaft disorder leads to the hair shaft becoming weak and constantly snapping and breaking it making it almost impossible to retain any length whatsoever when it comes to the scalp by having different hair shaft disorders or having hydrophobic fatigue and different things like that it actually stresses out the hair shaft there is something called telogen effluvium once we clear the scalp we'll be able to balance the sebum level we'll be able to balance and keep up with the hair's natural hair growth cycle we'll be able to keep up with that skin cell turnover cycle so we can work with the body and what i mean by working with the body once we regulate that skin cell turnover and that sebum level Level, then you can have a pattern and a routine and we'll get to that in a second that makes it easy for the scalp to be able to release toxins when it needs to out of the body and also for the sebaceous gland to be able to produce enough sebum needed to be able to coat the hair's shaft from root to tips right and then lastly either the style that you have needs to be properly prepared in a way or the style that you have needs to be one that makes it possible for the sebum to get from the scalp to the roots and once the scalp is clean and clear and the pattern is set it'll be easy black women or women with naturally curly hair or really wavy hair will be able to retain length easier simply because the scalp will be clean and there will be a easy way of flow because when you also go to the research one point of research you have to include is the amount or the other people who do not have this problem right because you have to look at other groups you can't just isolate the one group that you're searching or that you're studying right so when you go in and look at other groups meaning other races you will see that all of their practices are opposite of ours right but they have the hair growth and all of that stuff but the scalp health if they do put an essential oil or any type of oil mixture on the scalp it is for a treatment only it's rinse off the hair is clean the hair is shampooed regularly and the hair is brushed constantly at least once a day that way the oil is traveling from scalp to end so with this hypothesis right mind you a hypothesis is an a hypothesis is an educated guess so with this educated guess and my education isn't coming from what i want to make up but from studying right so for over 15 years in the hair industry and over 45,000 clients that i've had that I have client record cards from that I can go over and really look at the data. Not to mention I record everything and it wasn't just for YouTube. I'm a scientist and I've always been one. So I would always keep a video record of all of my clients. So that way, if I need to go in and search something, if she had a hiccup or anything, I could just go back into our video files and figure out where she went wrong. All right, so within the hypothesis, next it is time for me to move on. 
now it is time for me to test my experiment right to test an experiment I'm sorry so now at this point this is where you hear you know in the doctor's office and stuff they're doing like oh animal trials and stuff like that but we're not gonna do animal trials my testing and my experimenting was having over 45,000 clients throughout my career and having them all go home with you know digital ebooks and having them all have a set pattern and a set routine and me really keeping track of them and their growth process throughout that process if you need a little bit more hands-on help because obviously i'm not behind the chair anymore i have created an ebook that makes it's so easy for you to follow this process step by step as if I was your personal cosmetologist giving you a play by play, all right? Make sure you click the link in the description box below so you can get your hands on my growth cycle planner, right? Now, this is all for you. This is your 89 page hair growth journal and I break down everything that you could possibly need to know to have a healthy hair growth cycle from beginning to end it is my top seller and i really recommend you putting that one in conjunction with my growth cycle planner because this planner is a fillable planner that you can keep track of everything that you're doing from your wash day your skin cell turnover the hair products that you're using from oils essential oils and everything so this is a really 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 good combination i really recommend it check it out not only did I have, not only did I have a group with over a hundred different women in it, I also deal with hydronitis superativa and I get different outbreaks in my scalp and things of that nature all the time. So I also tested my hypothesis on myself. Also understanding that cell regeneration and different things of that nature can also be triggered by the foods that I eat, by the different things that I put within my body. Body. So I also changed everything about the way that I eat, which also helped me to notice that the more of a plant-based diet I have, the faster my cells regenerate themselves. It's just a basic science, right? After I made my hypothesis, I went ahead and tested out my hypothesis two years ago on my seven day challenge. And after that, now after me testing everything and doing the seven day challenge, getting reviews, talking to people within the challenge, having free consultations with people and understanding what they're dealing with and what they're going through now I have another body of data upon analyzing data I found out that once you remove the skin cells from the scalp you then allow the natural sebum to flow out of the hair shaft and completely down the hair shaft out the follicle and completely down the hair shaft sebum has so many powerful benefits that most of us have no idea about sebum is about so much more than just lubricating your hair and making it shiny these are all of the different things that sebum does it's pretty pretty dope and some of the things that stand out the most to me is that the sebum that is coming from your scalp also has the ability to fight different bacteria and anything from the environment or from your actual body also sebum is not just an oil it is actually a waxy substance that is meant to smooth and feed the cuticle by clients layering product on top of the hair and locking the cuticle what you do is you put a layer between the the you put a layer between the cuticle and the outside world and the cortex so the cortex of the hair is not getting fed the right type of nutrients because sebum has everything that your hair needs to stay stronger so when you do the process of elimination and you look at two two different test subjects remember yes i'm a black woman too yes i'm calling myself a test subject because we all test subjects right now it's the scientific method when natural sebum is absorbed into the hair shaft what it ends up doing is making sure that the cortex can operate greatly you may notice that sometimes you'll notice that your hair is getting a lot thinner but 
the hair gets thinner for two reasons. The first reason is because obviously hair is falling out, but the second reason is because the hair is losing too much melanin. The cortex of the hair shaft is where the melanin lives. If you have any type of hair shaft disorder where you have holes and splits within the cortex, within the cuticle, that means that the cortex is wide open. And if the cortex is open, anything that lives within the cortex is going to escape. And melanin, which makes your hair darker, whatever color it is, and then protein, which is going to make your, which is what's making your hair curly or straight. So that is why it is so vitally important for the sebum that is coming from the scalp to travel down the hair shaft so it can get within the cuticle and get within the cortex to feed the cortex. The moisture that black women need or the moisture that women with the naturally curly hair need lives within sebum. And the reason why it's harder for women with naturally curly hair to retain length and to maintain a healthy scalp is because they do not allow the sebum to escape the scalp in the first place and then the practices do not allow for hair to be for sebum to travel from the roots to the ends now one of the main comments so let's get to the conclusion if women with naturally curly hair have practices that allow their scalp to remain clean clear and free from debris bacteria and yeast bad yeast bad bacteria then the antigen phase of the hair growth cycle will be normalized the hair will start growing it's one and a half inches every month and you will notice great length retention now the problem that most people have especially women with naturally curly hair who've been doing twist outs for years have this thing like no i'm not combing my hair It's like you have to decide what you want if you have if you have a hairstyle where your hair is properly stretched when it's braided if the scalp is clean the natural sebum that is escaping from the scalp will make its way to the hair shaft with absolutely no problem right but this is why you'll notice that most cosmetologists or most braiders will tell you nowadays you need to come with your hair already blow dried out or some even tell you that they want it to be flat iron. This is not because they're lazy. It's because A, um, it's not legal for braiders to do that. It's imperative for you to get good length retention because for you to have strong hair and for your braids to actually be a protective style, your hair needs to be properly stretched. Regardless of race, every person has 100,000 follicles on their scalp and each follicle has anywhere between one to four strands. That means the average person has anywhere between 100,000 and 400,000 strands of hair on their head. So within each one of those 100,000 follicles, you have a sebaceous gland that is producing oil. And each one of those 100,000 to 400,000 strands of hair on your head have sebum wrapped around them as they are coming out of the scalp. So the only thing that you need to do is make sure that your scalp is clean so the sebum can produce itself and come out. You can remove the good and bad, bad, good and bad bacteria so that way yeast never grows and develops. Bad yeast never grows and develops on the scalp. All right, you're making sure that you're keeping your hair in styles that allow the sebum to flow down. I'm sorry, I know you love your twist outs or whatever you like, but any style that does not allow you to comb your hair is not a style that you should have. If you are a person that is concerned about the sebum traveling. Like if you're a person who has a locks, it's different because your hair is locked. So the sebum can make it from the roots to the ends. When you are locked, those everybody loses, remember anywhere between uh, five, uh, anywhere between 50 and 150 strands a day. But if you have locks, those hairs that you lose just become a part of the lock. That's what makes matted, that's what makes makes locks lock because all of those 
50 to 100 strands a day that you're losing, you lock them in there together. That's what a lock is. And that is why if you don't comb your hair on a regular basis, you have matting because your hair is locking. It's the same thing. And if everybody can understand that, then you'll understand why you need to comb your hair on a regular basis. It's a, it's a, it's a spiritual thing, but if you're not trying to lock your hair, then not combing your hair is not something that you should do. So if you just go ahead, keep the scalp clean and have the type of styles that allow your hair to remain stretched in a comfortable manner, then you good, right? So I do the seven day challenge and it teaches you everything you need to know. But remember, I'm a licensed cosmetologist. That is why cosmetologists, braiders, and hairstylists have jobs, right? Because it is your job to know the science of the human body. It is your job to know everything that you need to know, know for your everyday basic life. Just like you go to the dentist to get your teeth clean, but you're still responsible for brushing your teeth every day with, uh, with hair and with going to a hairstylist. You have to make sure that you know the science of your hair. You know the science of the human body and you aren't following fads because if you do the scientific method with why women with naturally curly hair don't have the length retention or why it's hard for them to retain moisture, it is simply because it is harder for hair, for oil to travel down a wave than it is for it to travel down a straight line. You can do whatever you want to do with your hair I love you guys so much my intention is not to change your mind on how to do your hair my intention is to make you aware of the scientific method that is used to make products for you make you aware of the scientific method that is taught to scientists everywhere and the methods that I use to make these videos or to do any type of scientific research period